Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is the Geometry Unit, Lesson 8, Dilations and Similarity. After this lesson, you need to be able to graph dilations on a coordinate plane, represent dilations in coordinate notation, and determine if two figures are similar. Let's learn dilations and scale factor. A dilation is a transformation which is similar to a scale drawing. It uses a scale factor to enlarge or reduce a figure proportionally. Scale factor is the ratio of the side lengths for the image to the side lengths of the pre-image. The pre-image and the image are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. If the scale factor is greater than 1, then the image will be enlarged. If the scale factor is between 0 and 1, then the image is reduced. And if the scale factor is exactly equal to 1, then the image will be the same size as the pre-image. The scale factor of the dilation shown is found using the ratio of a side length of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime to a side length of ABC. The notation CB represents the length of the line segment with endpoints C and B. So here we have C prime, B prime, and that length was 4. If we look at the corresponding side, CB, its side length was 2. So the ratio of C prime, B prime to CB is 4 to 2, or just 2. So that would just mean that the scale factor that we use to enlarge to go from ABC to A prime to B prime, C prime, would be a scale factor of 2. We essentially just multiplied everything by 2. And since the scale factor was greater than 1, our image was enlarged. Here we have another picture where triangle RST was dilated. The image here is R prime, S prime, T prime. And to find the scale factor, we're going to write the ratio of the length of the image to the length of the pre-image. So here's 6 to 8, which can be reduced to 3 over 4. So the ratio is 3 fourths, meaning that is what the scale factor was. So it is between 0 and 1. We reduced the size of our figure by multiplying everything by 3 fourths. So it got smaller. When we're talking about dilations as a transformation, it's going to enlarge or reduce a figure by a scale factor, but relative to a center point. That point is called the center of dilation, similar to in previous lessons where we had the center of rotation. So the center of dilation is just where everything is enlarged or reduced from. Here we're going to look at when it is from the origin, 0, 0. So when the center of dilation in the coordinate plane is the origin, each coordinate in the pre-image is just multiplied by the scale factor, or k, to find the coordinates of the image. So here we can see if we take our coordinates and multiply them by k, we're going to get new coordinates. So let's just look at b, for example. Originally, b is at 1, 4. Now, b is at 2, 8. So not only did we double the size, the original side length here was 3 and now it's 6, we doubled the size, but we doubled the distance that it was away from the origin. 1, 4 times 2 is now 2, 8. The scale factor here was just 2. Everything got doubled. And then whatever value we used for that scale factor, that determines whether that dilation is an enlargement, a reduction, or if it didn't affect the size at all. Example 1. Graph dilations. Triangle ABC has vertices of A at negative 2, 1, B at negative 4, 5, and C at 3, 2. We want to graph the image after a dilation with a scale factor of 2. So first let's find the coordinates of our image. We know that it's a scale factor of 2, so we're going to multiply each coordinate by 2. So negative 2, 1 times 2 would give us negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 5 times 2 would give us negative 8, 10. And if we multiply 3 and 2 by 2, we get 6 and 4. Now we have our new coordinates, which I wrote up here. We can graph those points to dilate our figure that was given originally. So a was at negative 2, 1. Now it's at negative 4, 2. So here is where a prime is. b was at negative 4, 5. Now it's at negative 8, 10. So there's our b prime. And c is now at 6, for C prime. If we connect using a straight edge so you can draw better lines than I can, we get our dilation of our figure. So we can see it's twice as big and it's stretched in every direction. So it's stretched vertically, stretched horizontally in each direction, and it's all from 0, 0. So another way you can tell kind of if you did it correct, notice to get to point A, it was diagonal across two boxes. Now I have to do that twice. To get to C, it was diagonal, three boxes, two boxes, diagonal, three boxes, two boxes. It followed the same kind of pattern, so I can be pretty confident that 
I put them in the right spot. Check your understanding. Graph the triangle given and its image after a dilation of scale factor 3. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, here's our original pre-image. That's where the coordinates should be located. Then if we want to graph multiplying by a scale factor of 3, we would make every point 3 times as far away. So point D, which was at negative 2, negative 1, times by 3 would now be at negative 6, negative 3, which is down over here. So here's D prime. E was at 0, 1, multiply that by 3, now it's at 0, 3. There's our E prime. And F multiplied by 3 would be 3, negative 9, which is down here, so there's our F prime. And everything is 3 times farther than it was from the origin. Example 2, graph dilations. Triangle JKL has the vertices 3, 8, 10, 6, and 8, 2. We want to graph the image after dilation with a scale factor of 1 half. So because it says we have a scale factor of 1 half, I can tell right away that my image is going to be smaller than the pre-image. And I know this because the scale factor is a fraction between 0 and 1. So let's multiply each coordinate by that scale factor. J times 1 half would give us J prime, which is 3 halves and 4. 3 halves is really just 1.5. K, which was 10, 6, multiplied by half for K prime will be 5, 3. And then L, which was 8, 2, to give us L prime of 4 and 1. So now let's graph those points to see what our dilation looks like. So 3 halves, 4, so 1 and a half and 4 would be about here. 5, 3, so k prime would be about there. There's our j prime, there's our k prime. L prime would be at 4, 1. So our dilated image would be about there. And we can see that everything is half as far away from the origin, which we dilated it from, compared to where it was originally. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and graph the original triangle and its image after the dilation given. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, here are your original coordinates. So negative 6, 9 is E, 3, 6 is F, and negative 3, 3 is G. Dilating it by one third, one, everything should be one third as far away from the origin as it was before. So it would be here. G prime is now here, F prime is over here, and E prime is here. And we can see the coordinates. E prime would be at negative 2, 3, F would be at 1, 2, and G would be at negative 1, 1. All these here were just multiplied by 1 third, which is also just dividing by 3. Example 3. Describe dilations. Use coordinate notation to describe the dilation. So first we need to figure out what happened to the points in order to come up with our coordinate notation. So originally, A was at negative 2, 4, B was at 4, negative 2, and C was at negative 4, negative 4. Then we can look, where did it end up? A is now at negative 1, 2, B is now at 2, negative 1, and C is now at negative 2, negative 2. So we need to look for the pattern to figure out how to go from one thing to the next, and it should follow the same rule every time if it was dilated correctly. So I'm looking, I'm going to stick with my positive numbers. I can see easily that 4 to 2, I just had to divide by 2. But unfortunately, scale factor is not a division number. We need to think about what are we multiplying by. So as a fraction, it would be like taking the number and multiplying it by 1, but dividing by 2. So whatever you have to divide by, put that on the bottom. That is your scale factor. Here it's 1 half. The coordinates of the image are half of the coordinates of the pre-image, so our scale factor is 1 half which means our dilation is a reduction. In our coordinate notation, we would say that our pre-image to go to our image would take the coordinate and multiply it by one half. Check your understanding. Use coordinate notation to describe this dilation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said coordinate notation. From your pre-image to your image, you had to use a scale factor of three Assuming this dilation was done correctly, all of them will follow the same thing. So if we just look at A, A is originally at 1, 2. Now it's at 3, 6. What happened to it? It had to be multiplied by 3. So 3 is the number out front. You had a scale factor of 3. Let's learn. Similarity. In a dilation, the scale factor was the ratio of the side lengths of the image to the side lengths of the pre-image. When the scale factor is not equal to 1, 
the dilation changes the size of the figure, but doesn't change the shape. If the size is changed, then that means that the image and pre-image are no longer congruent. So if you remember back in the previous lessons, we kept mentioning the word congruent or congruence. That meant they had the same size and the same shape. So here they have the same shape, but not the same size. So they are not congruent anymore. So dilations are not congruent. Here we can see different dilations. A scale factor of half took it in. A scale factor of one kept it the same size. And a scale factor of 1.5 made it larger, bringing it outward. With dilations, since it changes the size, but not the shape, they are what are called similar. You can show two figures are similar if the second, so your image, can be obtained from your pre-image by a sequence of dilations, that's the key one here, and possibly other congruence transformations such as translations, reflections, or rotations. So since a dilation does not change the shape of a figure, its image and pre-image are similar. Again, similar just means they look the same, they're the same shape, but they're going to be different sizes. On the graph, here we have E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime. There's a green parallelogram here. It was dilated from E, F, G, H, and it looks like it was a scale factor of two. Everything is now twice as far away from zero, zero as it was before. If we want to know if E double prime, F double prime, G double prime, H double prime, this orange parallelogram is similar to our original, we could use the fact that our green one was dilated, and then I can just translate it down on top of that orange one. So three units to the right and eight units down. So because I can map my blue one to the orange one by using a dilation and then a translation, these are similar. Now, there is a faster way to determine if two things are similar. So example two, determine similarity. Are the two figures similar? If so, describe a sequence that maps rectangle WXYZ onto rectangle RSPQ. If it's not, explain why they are not similar. So in similar figures, they have to be multiplied by the same scale factor each time. Otherwise, it's like it stretched it one way, but not the other. Kind of like if you had a picture and you were trying to make it larger, so the picture looked the same, just larger, you wouldn't stretch it by the sides because then maybe your face would get really long or really tall. You want to drag it by the corner so it enlarges or shrinks in both directions at the same time. When we do that, the ratios and the scale factor end up being the same every time. So if we check the scale factor, if it's the same scale factor everywhere, then it's similar. If it's not the same scale factor everywhere, or the same ratio, then it is not similar. So let's look at corresponding sides. We have S, P, and X, Y. It's like the figure just rotated up. The ratio for here is 5 to 7. S, P was 5 units long, X, Y was 7 units long. We need to check to see if the other ratios are the same. So let's do PQ to YZ. PQ was three, YZ was four. Are those the same? Well, if you're not sure, let's find a common denominator to see if they are equal fractions. So let's do 28. Seven times four is 28, so five times four is 20. Four times seven, so three times seven is 21. Are those the same fraction? No. Since right away, those are not the same ratio, they are not similar because the same scale factor wasn't used, meaning we didn't have a dilation. So if we check the other two, just because QR and ZW had a 5 to 7 ratio and RS to WX had a 3 fourths ratio. Again, not the same every time, so it is not similar. Check your understanding. Determine if these two figures are similar. If so, how can you go from the blue to the green? If they're not similar, explain why not. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said, no, they are not similar. Why not? If they were similar, everything would have an equal scale factor. If not, here's why. I'm going to look at the little short side on the top here. I can tell that those two sides should be corresponding based on where the diagonal is and how the shape seems to look. So A to B is three units long, where G to H is two. So that ratio is three to two. But if I look at the opposite side, C to D is five units long and E to F is four. Is three to two the same as five to four? Well, I can see right away that this, I can just make a common denominator of four. Six to four is not the same as five to four. They are not equal ratios. So a dilation did not occur, so they are not similar. Again, similar just means it's the same shape, but one is larger or smaller than the other. 
And I guess you could also have similar figures that are the exact same size since they would be multiplied by a scale factor of one. But in that case, we'd probably use the word congruent instead. So these ones are just not similar. They're close, but no. Uh, 